In the near future, Earth is a perfect place with no violence and a healed environment. However this is because aliens known as souls have taken over humanity. They're parasites that travel from planet to planet, inserting themselves into the bodies of the dominant species and getting rid of the host's consciousness. The souls can still access the host's memories and can be differentiated from normal humans by the silver rings in their eyes. There are a few humans that haven't been taken over yet and hide a way to survive. One of these rebels is Melanie, who is trying to hide in a hotel but sadly is still found by a group of cop-like souls known as Seekers. Melanie manages to hit a few of them and runs to the next floor, where she jumps through the window and obtains severe injuries when crashing on the ground. The Seekers capture her and take her to a medical facility, where all of Melanie's wounds are instantly healed with an alien spray. Then they take a soul parasite from a capsule and insert it in her body. When she wakes up, her eyes have changed and the soul in her introduces herself as Wanderer. For the rest few hours, Wanderer is allowed to rest and get used to the new body, only to discover a voice in her head, it turns out Melanie refuses to die and is fighting Wanderer's control. Later, Seeker Blondie calls Wanderer to her office and asks her to access Melanie's memories so they can learn where the rebels are hiding. Wanderer does so and starts explaining Melanie's past, one day while she was swimming with her brother Jamie, the Seekers arrived. The siblings stayed hidden in the pier while in the house, their dad self-deleted to avoid becoming a soul. Melanie tries to stop Wanderer from saying these things but she isn't strong enough. That night, Wanderer dreams about her host's memories. Melanie was raiding a house for food when she suddenly was attacked by the occupant Jared, who thought she was a soul. Soon he realized she was human like him and kissed her in excitement, but Melanie pushed him off and ran away. Jared went after her and after proving he was human, he asked to team up. When Wanderer wakes up, she can't forget the sensation of the kiss. Then she draws a portrait of Jared until Melanie forces her to drop the pencil. The next day Blondie finds the drawing and scolds Wanderer for it before asking for more information. Wanderer explains Melanie and Jamie started to live with Jared in the countryside. Melanie and Jared grew close and eventually got together. Feeling their love leaves Wanderer very confused and Blondie has to remind her humans physical urges are also wrong. The flashback continues showing that one day Jared saw the Seekers approaching so they had to run away, hoping they would find the rebels. During the journey, they stopped to rest at a hotel, where the Seekers found Melanie. She was being a distraction so the others could run away. Afterward Wanderer says she can't see any more memories and Blondie leaves, however there's a landscape on her mind that she immediately draws. Melanie convinces her to tear the paper into pieces because showing that location to the Seekers would put her loved ones in danger. For the next few days, Blondie keeps on interrogating Wanderer, who doesn't say anything more because now that she's felt Melanie's love she wants to protect it. One afternoon, Blondie informs Wanderer that Jared was sighted and the Seekers would soon find him. Wanderer freaks out and tries to attack her, but Blondie quickly overpowers her and puts her to sleep with the spray. Later at the facility, Blondie and a doctor conclude Melanie isn't letting Wanderer take over and announce they'll transfer her to a more compliant host. Blondie plans to take over Melanie just to see her memories and ditch the body later. Wanderer is left to rest for the night since the procedure is in the morning, and Melanie convinces her to escape. She teaches her how to get the door stuck with a chair and makes her jump off the balcony, landing in the pool. A seeker tries to stop Wanderer, but Melanie makes her turn the spray to put him to sleep. Then Melanie wants to steal a car, however Wanderer knows she can just ask for it by saying it's an emergency. A driver gives it to her without hesitation because these aliens don't usually do crime and blindly trust each other. In the building, Blondie and the doctor struggle with the door and eventually break it down, but it's too late. They search the room and in Wanderer's clothes they find the pieces of the drawing. During the drive Melanie keeps sharing memories of his relationship with Jamie to distract Wanderer and force the hands to steer the car into the direction of the rebel's base. When Wanderer realizes this, both girls start fighting over the wheel and causes the car to crash off the road. With no other choice, Wanderer lets Melanie guide her through the desert, making sure to step on rocks to avoid leaving tracks. At the Seeker facility, Blondie puts the drawing together and finds the location on a digital map. She immediately leaves in her modern vehicle and reaches the spot with the crashed car, but there are no tracks for her to follow. She calls back up and sends them to search the area. Meanwhile Wanderer keeps on walking through the desert with just a small bottle of water from the car. Eventually the sunburn is too much and passes out under a tree. There she's found by Jeb, the leader of the rebels. As he gives her some water Wanderer says you found us, and the use of us gets Jeb's attention. At that moment more rebels arrive, but they aren't happy. Maggie slaps her while Ian and Kyle want to kill her for being a parasite. However Jeb keeps them back with his weapon and blindfolds Wanderer to bring her with them. The group enters a secret cave in the mountains where the rebels have been hiding all along. Melanie's loved ones are there, but Jared immediately hits her. Maggie says Melanie should be taken care of by their doctor like the other parasites, but a shocked Jamie disagrees. Wanderer is given a room and Jamie spies on her through a hole on the roof. Melanie asks Wanderer not to tell anyone about her voice because they'll think she's lying. Jared guards her room knowing the other guys will want to kill her. When they come, Jared starts fighting Kyle and Wanderer rushes out to defend him, but they ignore her and keep fighting. 
Ian uses the chance to grab Wanderer and start choking her, but at that moment Jeb shows up and fires a warning shot, making everyone stop. He announces the corridor to Wanderer's room is now off limits and threatens to shoot anyone who tries again. Before leaving, Jared asks Jeb to keep Jamie away from her. Sometime later, Ian, Jared, and Kyle notice that the Seekers are in the area. Eventually the group gives up because there are no clues to follow, but Blondie refuses to leave with the others. Back to Wanderer, she finally sees Jamie spying on her and explains she's taken over Melanie's body while Jeb listens to them in secret. At that moment the guys come back and Jared reminds Jamie to stay away from Wanderer because she's evil. However Ian is starting to have doubts because souls usually don't come to the defense of others. In the desert, Blondie gets a call informing that the search team is going back because humans were detected in the area. In the morning, Jeb tells Wanderer he'll call her Wanda for short and takes her to an underground river so she can wash herself. Then she takes her to their wheat plantation, which they keep alive, thanks to some mirrors in a hole in the roof that redirect sunlight. At the same time the Seekers begin searching the area in helicopters. Soon Jeb hears the choppers and sends everyone to close the mirrors so they won't be seen, getting rid of the reflection just in time. After the helicopters are gone, Jeb gives his weapon to Jamie so he can feel safe while hanging out with Wanderer, not telling him he kept the bullets. Jamie takes Wanderer to see a cave filled with glowworms and Melanie decides they should share the truth. Wanderer explains that Melanie is still alive inside her and a relieved Jamie hugs her. Meanwhile a group of humans leaves in trucks to search for supplies. They ride a supermarket and when they're loading the trucks, they're found by a seeker. Jared quickly knocks him out and puts him in the truck before they drive away. The next morning Wanderer is invited to harvest the wheat. While she works, she keeps exchanging flirty looks with Ian. Maggie refuses to give her water and Ian shares his. Wanderer enjoys the attention even though Melanie reminds her he tried to kill her. Suddenly the sound of the choppers coming back startles Jamie and causes him to get hurt with a scythe. Everyone rushes to close the mirrors again and avoid getting found. The helicopters fly away and notice one of the trucks on the road driving faster than allowed. The guys in that truck open fire and scare the chopper away, but seekers in cars soon start chasing them. Soon they're surrounded with no ways to escape, so the guys decides to crash the truck to avoid getting caught. In the other truck, Jared and Kyle are devastated to watch their friends die but they have to pretend to be souls and keep going. The Seeker Blondie notices the hesitation and informs her team. Soon a Seeker car begins chasing them as well and Kyle opens fire to no avail. Jared stops the truck under a bridge and causes the car to crash against it. Then he and Kyle try to kidnap the driver, but at that moment Blondie arrives and begins shooting at them. The guys immediately escape in the truck and Blondie accidentally shoots the Seeker driver instead, killing him. The other Seekers calling her out on it, saying she's losing control and needs to drop this pointless chase. In the caves, Wanderer shares stories about her people. They've taken over 12 planets with intelligent life and swears they've always lived in harmony with other species. She also reveals she's over a thousand years old. At that moment Jared and Kyle return and are furious to see Wanderer sitting at the table like an equal. Jeb stops them from shooting and Ian explains she isn't a threat, but he isn't hurt. Jamie cuts in and finally reveals Melanie is still alive in there, yet Jared refuses to believe it and leaves. Ian announces Wanderer can stay in her room for safety. That night Jared dreams about his naughty times with Melanie and decides to talk to her, although he keeps saying it instead of she. Ian agrees to give them a moment in private and Jared kisses Wanderer, causing Melanie to panic and force Wanderer to push him away like their first time. Jared is excited because he sees this as proof Melanie is still in there and says he loves her. Terrified, Wanderer runs away to hide near the river. At that moment Kyle comes looking for her, so she hides underwater. She waits for him to leave and tries to escape through another tunnel, but he's waiting for her and immediately attacks her. After lots of struggle, he tries to push her into the waterfall, but Wanderer manages to punch him and make him fall instead. Melanie wants to let him die, but Wanderer grabs his hand to keep him from drowning. Soon Ian and Jared arrive and help her take him out of the water. Afterward the doctor checks on both of them and Jeb demands an explanation. Wanderer says it was an accident and Ian doesn't believe her, but since they have no proof of an attack Kyle gets to stay for now. Then Jared tells Ian to stay away from Wanderer and leaves with Kyle on another supply run. Later Ian takes Wanderer out of the cave to enjoy the sunlight and admits he likes her. Wanderer says she likes him too and Ian tries to kiss her, but Wanderer stops him because of Melanie's protests. Ian kisses her anyway and Wanderer asks for time to think. Meanwhile at the Seeker facility, Blondie continues to watch footage of the area and sees her hand shaking. She refuses to admit she's losing control as she hears a voice in her head. Sometime later, Wanderer notices that Jamie's wound hasn't received proper care. She rushes to confront the doctor and is horrified to discover that the kidnapped seekers are brought here so the doctor can remove the parasites, which kills them. After calling the group monsters, she goes to her room to cry. Days pass with Wanderer refusing to leave the room or eat. Eventually Jeb comes to check on her and points out she can't expect humanity to surrender. Wanderer wants to leave, so to make her stay Jeb promises not to bring any more hostages. He also informs her that Jamie is severely sick because his wound is infected. 
Worried, Wanderer rushes to check on Jamie as she tries to talk to Melanie, yet the voice isn't responding anymore. She lies to Jamie and says Melanie is fine, but then she rushes to see Ian and asks him to kiss her. Nothing in her tries to interrupt the kiss, which confirms Melanie is gone. However Ian refuses to believe it and asks Jared to kiss Wanderer instead. This causes Melanie to react and make Wanderer bite Jared to stop the kiss. Hearing about Jamie, Melanie agrees they must do something and Wanderer convinces Jared to take her to the city. Outside the hospital, Jared's knife gives Wanderer some wounds that she uses to get an appointment with a doctor. The advanced spray immediately heals all the wounds and while the doctor is distracted, Wanderer steals a bunch of spray bottles in her bag. On her way out, she sees a soul capsule and takes it as well. Nearby, a mysterious bike gets ready to follow them. The duo makes it back to the caves and the sprays immediately heals Jamie, who instantly feels better. Now the group trusts Wanderer more and take her to their next supply run because she can get all the food legally, thanks to her eyes. Moments later when they return to the cave, they're shocked to see the guard dead on the ground. At that moment Blondie appears because she had been the one on the bike. She gets ready to shoot them, but Jeb appears and shoots her down first. Blondie is taken to the cave and healed with a spray, which leaves her very confused. Wanderer asks her a few questions and realizes the other seekers don't know where she went, so they should be safe. After lots of thinking, Wanderer talks to the doctor and says she can teach him how to remove parasites without killing them if he promises not to murder them anymore, which he agrees to. Afterward Blondie is sedated and the doctor makes an incision, which Wanderer uses to teach the humans how to carefully remove the alien by coaxing it out. The little alien is put inside the capsule she stole and Blondie wakes up as a human again, revealing her original name as Lacey. Like Melanie, Lacey was also stuck inside her own head and this caused Blondie to chase after Wanderer to stop more hosts from becoming like her. A few hours later, the group goes to the city and Wanderer uses the laser system through which the capsules arrive at Earth to send the Blondie parasite back to space. When they return to the caves, Wanderer asks the doctor to remove her from Melanie's body and let her die. Everyone disagrees with the idea since they can save the parasite too, but Wanderer doesn't listen. Ian goes after her and says he loves her, so Wanderer finally gives him a kiss as goodbye. Sometime later, Wanderer wakes up and is shocked to see Melanie in front of her. The group brings a mirror and explains they've given her the body of a girl that had brain death, so instead of taking a life she's actually helping this person live. Now Wanderer can start a new life with Ian with her new human name Wanda, while Melanie gets to go back to Jared. Some months later, both couples are out in the city and are stopped by a seeker. He immediately removes everyone's sunglasses to learn they're human and notices Wanda's alien eyes, asking if she's a prisoner. The others want her to lie to save herself, but Wanda says she's friends with humans. This causes the seeker to smile, it turns out he's also working with a group of humans who has been looking for other survivors, and they invite the couples to team up. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.